Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to be talking about a very important topic in laparoscopy which is less often discussed which is ergonomics in laparoscopic surgery. Uh, so we are going to discuss this topic in detail but before we go on to what are the parts and what are the components of ergonomics let us first try to understand what the term ergonomics actually means. So most of the times most surgeons are even unaware of what this term actually means. Ergonomics by definition is the study of people in their working environment. And this is a science which is supposed to design or modify the work to fit the worker and not the other way around. So the idea is to make the workplace as seamless as possible to eliminate discomfort and injury due to work. So that is the definition of ergonomics and why is ergonomics in laparoscopy so important? Well, the reason being that the surgeon in laparoscopy is required to maintain various positions during laparoscopic surgery. These may not be entirely physiological. According to a published study, only 11% of surgeons actually know ergonomic principles. And if you are already doing laparoscopy, you know that there are high rates of neck, shoulder and back pain among laparoscopic surgeons, sometimes to the tune of 89%, which is a huge number. Sadly, this kind of thing is considered as part of the job, but it may actually be a warning sign to make immediate postural and OT modifications. So let us look at what are the uh, parts of ergonomics in laparoscopy or what are the elements that we need to consider. We need to look at OT equipment. We need to look at patient positioning. We need to look at positioning of the team the surgeon posture and finally the port placement. So these are the five headings under which we are going to be discussing today's topic. Let us first take OT equipment. Now as in OT equipment, the first and primary important thing to consider is the table height and when the fact that which OT table should you buy. The usual table as you will see goes up to approximately 3 feet in height which is up to the surgeon's waist. But if possible, you should ideally take an OT table which is about 26 inches or it goes to your mid thigh according to your height. This makes it very easy to operate without excessive strain on the hand. The second important point to note is the OT table fulcrum. Now here we have got two images. The images at the top is the fulcrum which is at the head end of the patient. This is a typical ortho table and the second one is a fulcrum at the center and this is the kind of table that we need to have. It is best if the fulcrum is at the center because then the head low position does not raise the table height. This is a particular problem in an ortho table. Let's see how exactly this happens. So this is an orthopedic table where the pillow is kept is the head end of the patient. And you can see that as head low position is given, it is not only the head which is going to go up, but is the entire table. And as a result, the pelvis is going to keep moving up and make it more and more difficult for the surgeon to operate. So we don't want that kind of thing. We want only the head to go down and hence a table with a fulcrum at the center will be the best one. So what to do if you already have an OT table which has a fulcrum which is at one end. The simple thing that we do in places where there is already an orthopedic table is that you flip the table around by 180 degrees. So the image on the left is the typical ortho table and the image on the bottom right over here is the uh, table which has been turned around. So convert the leg end of the table into the head end and vice versa and then when you give the patient head high position it will actually become head low for that particular patient and you will effectively have the fulcrum in the center of the OT table. So that's a kind of hack that you can use in order to convert an orthopedic inconvenient OT table into a good OT table with the fulcrum at the center. The second part of equipment that you need to look at is the endoscopy equipment and primarily the one that we are concerned with in case of ergonomics is the monitor. Now the monitor should be placed at a height which is convenient to the surgeon. So this may be different for different different surgeons. 
If it is possible, then the monitor must be given a downward tilt. As you can see in this second image over here, the monitor has been given a downward tilt. And this is very good in case you are you doing a lot of hysteroscopic surgery. So it reduces the neck strain and you don't have to look up all the time. Also, adjusting these flaps or uh, these guards or these stands, whatever you may call them, so that the monitor fits in between. It does not always have to be on the top rack, but it could fit here between the first and second rack. And that will sometimes make it very convenient, particularly if the surgeon is a little low in height. The third important thing you need to know is the insufflator. Try to keep the insufflator, this is the insufflator over here, this is the light source. Try to keep the insufflator at the level of the patient's body so that the CO2 delivery to the patient's abdomen is seamless and you get a good distension pressure always. The other important thing and this is talked about quite frequently, the top of the monitor must be at about 15 degrees lower to the transverse height of the surgeon's eye. So the surgeon must take a 15 degree low tilt of his neck in order to look at the monitor and it should not be at the level or definitely should not be above the level of the surgeon's eye. So the idea is not to have an extension but a mild flexion of the surgeon's neck. So monitor height adjusted so that the surgeon is a little bit flexed in his neck posture and not extended. Uh, of course, you need to change this compared to the surgeon and the surgeon's height. So here you will see in the image on the left hand side, this is almost impossible to operate in this way. And even if you cannot change the trolley, at least what you can do is you can use a platform in order to increase the surgeon's height. This is still not optimal, but definitely better than the image on the left. So this is the platform that she has used in order to increase the height. Now, this piece of equipment is so important that it actually deserves a slide of its own. The platform, this is something that we have customized and made for ourselves. This is 30 inches across, 20 inches anteroposterior and 6 inches in height. But you could adjust it according to your own convenience. The idea is that it must accommodate the surgeon as well as the foot pedal and the surgeon should be able to move around a little bit comfortably on this platform. So if you see this particular image, I'm able to stand quite nicely. The, uh, the, the pedal is kept on the platform and I'm able to work the pedal quite comfortably and move around a little bit if I wish to. So that is the platform that needs to be there. Uh, the assistant also needs to sometimes have a platform and if you will look at this image, this is the platform that she is using. Uh, the size varies according to the assistant's convenience but this has to be usually higher than the surgeon because the assistant has to sometimes look over the shirt, uh, surgeon's shoulder and see the monitor. He or she must be able to see the monitor at all times because if the camera person is inconvenienced then the whole team is going to suffer. Next, we come to the part two, which is patient positioning. And this is also equally important, if not more. The position that we use always for laparoscopic surgery is called as the low dorsal lithotomy position. We sometimes call it the modified extended lithotomy position, but the correct name is the low dorsal lithotomy. And the idea is to have the patient's knees at the level of the abdomen. They cannot be flexed as much as they are in a vaginal hysterectomy because then that would restrict the movement of the instruments. This position allows free movement of the instruments. In real life, that is how it would look like and if you do not have the allen stirrups so these stirrups that you see here these are called allen stirrups and they can be adjusted to a variety of angles but even if you don't have them you can simply bend the lithotomy rods at an angle as is shown by the red arrow and keep the knees padded and supported and that should be enough to give you your extended lithotomy or low dorsal lithotomy position Again, patient positioning arms by the sides is very important. This avoids hyperextension of the arms and allows free movement of the surgeon and first assistant by the side of the table. Usually before the patient is induced, we put a cloth just below the patient's body and once that is done, the two ends of the cloth go over the arms and under the patient's waist. So the patient's weight herself supports the two arms. They are straight. You need to put an extension tubing, but it avoids any any kind of injury either to the patient and the surgeon is also extremely at ease by moving around the side of the table. Next we come to team positioning. 
and this is also a very important factor now in team positioning usually we prefer to have a five member team so if you will see this image one two four and five are described in literature and this is particularly one is the surgeon two is the first assistant uh Four is the vaginal end assistant, and five is the person on the trolley. But we usually prefer to have one more person standing, which is person number three, and this is the cameraman. This takes away the strain of holding the camera and uh, doing and assisting the primary surgeon from person number two, and it also gives person number three only one dedicated work, which is to hold the camera. So ideally, you must have five people doing a major laparoscopic surgery. Of course, the anesthetic. Is one more. Ideal is to have at least two monitors. So surgeon sees one monitor over here, right in the front, and assistant sees one monitor right in the front. And sometimes, if you want, person number four could also see this. But you could also have another monitor placed at this angle in order for the vaginal assistant to see. Nevertheless, the idea is to have a direct vision from the surgeon and the assistant side without them having to turn their neck and thereby making neck strain less as. we go along the surgery so person number 3 is what we add extra to the conventional surgeon or team positioning and this is the normal team positioning that we have the surgeon is here able to look at the monitor this is the first assistant this is the camera person this is the person at the vaginal i am mean, sorry at the trolley and this is the person at the vaginal end with the anesthetist so this is the ideal team positioning that we use note that person number 3 is missing over here but that is something we add for our convenience so this is the same from the other angle just for you to understand everybody has only one monitor here to see ideal of course is two monitors and this is from the back side where you can see the entire team positioning and i think this person is also equally vital because then the surgeon does not have to turn around again and again to pick up instruments if the person knows what he is doing he can just pass on the instruments and you can be at ease the third point in ergonomics is surgeon posture this also is very important uh when you have an correct surgeon posture you must avoid shoulder abduction beyond 30 degrees keep the arms close to the body at all times possible there can be a 90 degree flexion at the elbow so this is a 90 degree flexion at the elbows and try to keep the wrist straight as much as possible so this is the most comfortable surgeon posture for doing surgery uh now the other point is how to compensate height so you will see in this video the pillow imagine the pillow is where the pelvis is and as the table height increases you will see that with the patient's abdomen inflated it becomes more and more difficult for the surgeon to operate and the shoulders keep going away from the body and this is not conducive to doing a good surgery what you then need to do is to use a platform when you are using a platform automatically your height increases and the arms which were away from the body become close to the body and now you are able to operate comfortably so use a platform when you need to the second important point about surgeon posture is avoiding weight on one single leg normally the surgeon's weight is always on his or her right leg because the left leg is free for activating the pedals avoid prolonged standing on one leg or asymmetric weight bearing because this will be locking the right knee joint for a long period of time shift your weight periodically so as to reset the legs and then go at it again this simple step will go a long way in avoiding knee injuries in the future uh the arm board like i said before you must remove the arm board there should not be an arm board over there because that is going to obstruct my movement and it will avoid twisting of the spine again and again in order to look at the monitor uh this is also very important the forward head tilt is something that all of us do a lot of times the head keeps moving forward because there is continuous concentration on the television screen and you will see as the head moves forward there is more and more pressure on the mid cervical spine and accelerated degenerative changes of the mid cervical spine what is needed is a postural reset and some neck exercises and shoulder exercises from time to time so that the pressure is released and you are at ease again in surgeon posture try to avoid adduction and internal rotation this is a kind of reflex posturing while concentrating on the screen and this causes excessive workload on the deltoid and the trapezius so try to reset yourself again and again in order to avoid this kind of adduction and internal rotation 
द लास्ट पॉइंट इन सर्जन और अर्गोनॉमिक्स इज पोर्ट प्लेसमेंट दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वी नॉर्मली टेक आर प्राइमरी ट्रोकर आइदर एट द अम्बिलिकस और एट द सुपरा अम्बिलिकल लेवल so this trocar is taken at the umbilicus and then you draw a line from the umbilicus to the anterior superior iliac spine and take the prime the the first accessory trocar at the 2/3rd 1/3rd junction the ports on the left and right are mirror images of each other and you could also have the top port which is a mirror mirror image of the port on the left side so for a difficult surgery you would have a total of five ports and for a simple surgery four ports should normally be enough the other accessory trocar placement possible is also a diamond shaped trocar placement which is a supra pubic trocar and that is mostly the way that european surgeons do operate nevertheless try to find which is most convenient for you we find this particular trocar placement good because it is easy on the hands it is possible to do some contralateral work the wrist and shoulders are relaxed at all times and the surgeon is used able to operate quite freely and without any hassles so this is the standard trocar placement and port placement that we use for all our cases so i think that covers most of the points of ergonomics in laparoscopic surgery i wish you all a stress free and a healthy endoscopy career free of injuries and if there are any points that have been missed out please do let me know in your feedback thank you so much for your patience and for hearing